So we have new equipment, we have new analyzers and generators. It's important to note that historically, the workbench has been the place where discoveries are made. They're not made theoretically usually. They're usually, you find something out, it gets lost, it gets rediscovered or rediscovered by accident. My favorite case is in, in the last year, somebody was able to finally burn water. That must have been tried 10,000 times before. We have plenty of stuff to do and we have a new theory, which is really great. And it's cheap. That's it. That's the R&D department. All right, here's where the, our ability to quantize psychoenergetics begins. We have a ROM reader. The devices are based on memory. Now, if you look at this here, what, the, the devices are usually shipped for the manufacturer, let's say, with all Fs, which is all bits set. We're in hexadecimal. This is an imprint, which has occurred after the, our box here has been exposed somewhere. And you'll see there's like zeros, E's, ones, threes, kind of all over the place, a C, four, eight, pretty random. Uh, there's a D in here somewhere. There's a B and an eight. Okay, so that's what I call a signature. And that reflects, uh, we have, that reflects the psychoenergetic impact which has been impressed upon this device. And this is the basis of our ability to quantify. This is the experimental platform that you see, the inside of which we usually only use for experiments, we use one of these three cells. Is that package, is that a crystal, some kind of crystal oscillator? Yes, it is. It's a TTL oscillator, and that's a very important point, which I'll get to. These are the analyzers. Obviously, they can't travel. This looks like a bomb. They're delicate, but these are our key contributions. These are handmade. I created them. The output of the analyzer, this is a little mini computer built into the case here. Okay, this is the output of the analyzer report. It has a GPS logging, which is actually mandated by most journals now. This, for example, says that, I'm sorry, we have 8,000 addresses in the memory device. And this says that for the last sampling period, at these addresses, a change occurred. Now, we're not looking below the address, uh, below the fact that a change occurred in the analyzer. It's a byte-by-byte -byte comparison, which is just a limitation of the hardware. It should be done bit by bit. So that's what we get from the analyzer, real-time report. And real-time reports are important because real-time is what begins to start science thinking away from mere correlation towards causality. If you look at the history of science, it's the compression of time which amounts to the creation of a causal proof. All right, now we're going to be talking about our experiments, our new work, the first stuff of it that's ever been done of its kind, the first objectively replicated psychoenergetic effects. And this stuff again, this stuff has all been peer reviewed. And we're not using meditators. This is completely new. Nobody's ever done this stuff before. All right, so what is entanglement? Start with the metaphor as always. An EEPROM is like an apartment building with rooms and has people in it. And it has a, a security system. The memory has a security system which consists of deterministic aspects of digital logic, the specific control pins and sequence that you have to use to write data in and out, the laws of electronics themselves. And then you have this room zero space from room 8191, that's as I say, 8100 addresses. And inside this room 31, let's say you have this person uh, who has an identity of 178. And then across town, you build a second apartment building. You're Mr. Trump, I suppose, because it looks exactly like this one. And it has a very good security system. Well, unfortunately for the Trump operation, uh, despite the best attempts, if they're used if they're <laughs> to follow the metaphor, within an hour, within a day, within a week, whatever, person 178 will make it out of this security system, through this security system, into the room in the other building. Happens all the time. That's, what, that's entanglement. There's no wired connection. There's no standard radio connection between the devices. There's no transmitter receiver model. This is what we call entanglement. All right. I will have some comments about these figures afterwards. So we have the real-time analyzer, which actually has a, the same thing in it. It's based on this, the same experimental cell. So we have this, and then we have a unit under test. And uh, they're separated. And this one's set to something, and this one's set to something else. And I set up distinctions, and that's what it's about, and see what these statistics are. All right, so in the first example, 
we were just, uh, we get started, and most of these are short-term duration tests. Most of these are just two days. So in this test, the first one, I didn't want to change the contents of the RTA EEPROM. I didn't want to initialize it. I just wanted to start off with what it was. We got an 80% correlation. The data over in the unit under test was the changed from its initial zeros to the data that was over here. In the next test, I did reinitialize the RTA to all Fs. And in 83% of the cases, and I initialized the UUT to all zeros, in 83% of the cases, the data in the UUTs were Fs. That's why the title of this is that we're talking about register-specific data. What should happen over here is noise. What should happen over here if we're off the track is what you saw in the example that I gave of a random signature. But no, we're getting clear Fs and zeros. Repeated it. This is a little bit more elaborate, but we had 21 changes with 86% correlation. I came back and I said, okay, this is too good. This is impossible. So I started changing things to break it down into test patterns. I broke it down into zero Fs, 74% correlation on 81 changes. 